Good driving is like any special ability. It requires knowledge translated into skill. And with the number of cars and drivers on today's road, safe driving skills were never more important. A driver today is confronted with hundreds of potential danger situations every time he gets behind the wheel. One out of every three drivers traveling more than 12,000 miles a year is involved in an auto accident of some kind. It's not only what you do that counts, but what the other guy does. You've got to protect yourself with the knowledge and skills of good driving. For safety's sake, you've got to remember them every second you're behind the wheel. Mr. Les Veland, nine times a winner of the Mobile Gas Economy Run and veteran engineer and test driver for American Motors Corporation. Mr. Veland is one of the most widely respected professional drivers in the country. Safety involves a lot more than careful driving. Safest driver in the world would still be in trouble if the car he was driving wasn't safe. Here at the vast American Motors proving grounds, we go through a great deal of effort to make your car safe. What the engineers and designers build, we test here and in our extensive testing labs. The result of all this is a car that's safer for you. A car with built-in features such as a double safety brake system, high strength door locks, seat belts and shoulder belt anchors, four-way hazard signals, an energy absorbing steering column, safer interiors, and many other important safety features. The point is, when you finally get the car, it's as safe as we can build it. But any car is only as safe as a man or woman who finally sits behind the wheel. And that's where the manufacturer's skill leaves off, and yours begins. With Mr. Veland's help, we'll investigate some of the basic driving skills that can help make today's driver a safe driver. There's a lot to the art of safe driving. You've heard most of the rules of the road, but safe driving begins before you ever get out on the road. It begins with you and your car. A good driver goes through a pre-flight check, just like an airline captain. Are your headlights adjusted and working? Are they clean? Tire pressure right, too low or too high. Either one is bad for control. What about general visibility? Is the windshield clean? Are the windshield washers filled and operating properly? Mirror clean and adjusted? It could be important. And the list doesn't end with your car. It should include you automatically take stock of your emotions and learn to shift emotional gears. Get yourself in the right frame of mind before you start out. Everyone knows that alcohol and gasoline are a bad mixture, but do you know how bad? Do you know that about half of all fatal automobile accidents involve someone who's been drinking? Remember this too when you go over your checklist. Driving safely involves the mastery of many individual skills, but it's all summed up by two essential pieces of advice. Drive defensively and drive according to conditions. There's much to be said for freeway driving. Many of the old hazards are gone. You don't have to worry about such things as hidden intersections, sudden hills or curves, pedestrians, or even oncoming traffic. Freeways are different, all right. So different, they've completely rewritten many of the old rules on safety. Freeway driving means high-speed driving. And the place to pick up speed is the entrance lane. When you reach the traffic stream, move right into an opening. Don't slow down. 
then just stay with traffic. Don't buck the current. And above all, keep that interval. With no oncoming traffic, passing is a more leisurely affair. Get into the passing lane early so you may avoid sudden moves at these speeds. And always use your turn signals to let the other drivers know what you're up to. When the car you passed is clearly visible in your mirror, pull back in. As you approach your exit, maintain speed until you hit the exit lane, then slow down. Let your speedometer be your guide. Don't depend on feel. Nighttime driving is something that nearly everyone is familiar with. But many drivers don't really understand that you can't drive the same way at night as you do in the daytime. The problem is visibility. What you can see and what you can't see. You've got to adjust for your limited vision. Nighttime accidents are often a simple case of overdriving the headlights. Learn the relation between your lights and your car's stopping distance. Switch to your low beams early. Your headlights can be lethal in someone else's eyes. And they're just as blinding in a rear view mirror. Use dims when you're following a car at 200 feet or less. Wait till you're well past before switching back to highs. When conditions change, your driving must change. And in the wintertime, conditions certainly do change. Half the posted speed limit may be too fast. You've got to separate the fact from the fiction when it comes to winter driving. Extra weight in the trunk can help traction, but it can make steering a lot trickier once you get going. Many accidents in wintertime are caused by snow blindness. Clean every light and window. Winter's the time you can least afford poor visibility. When you start, go slow in second or drive. And remember, you need a longer interval on snow or ice. If you must stop, pump your brakes gently so the rear tires don't lose traction. Most skids start on corners. Take them slowly. If you do skid, Always steer in the same direction as the skid. We've seen how road and weather conditions affect safe driving, and we've seen what we have to do to compensate for them. Now suppose you've done everything you should for a particular driving situation. Would you be completely safe then? Unfortunately, no. There's still another factor. The other guy. And this is where defensive driving really comes into play. When the other guy makes a mistake, you've got to be ready for him. The scourge of all sensible drivers, the tailgater. What do you do besides dream of a rear-firing cannon? Slow down. As soon as you see him, gradually lose speed and move over. Force him to pass. If he can't pass, you've eliminated the possibility of a high-speed collision. Stay slow until he gets around. Intersections. As you approach, hold your foot over the brake pedal. It may save precious moments in reaction time. Turning left, keep your wheels straight till you actually move. Otherwise, a bump from behind will push you into oncoming traffic. No matter what the other guy does, most accidents are preventable if you see them developing early enough. Keep your eyes moving. Learn to read the danger signs. That's what defensive driving is all about. Every driver has at one time or another played the game, what would you do if? What would you do if an oncoming car suddenly swerved into your lane? Or what would you do if you had a blowout? 
This game has some merit if you know the right answers. And these answers must become so familiar that you can react instinctively in case of a genuine emergency. When a front tire blows at high speed, you've got to be quick and you've got to be right. Keep a firm grip and maintain direction. Forget the brakes. Just gently decelerate and pull off the road. Suppose it happens, an oncoming car in your lane. Slow down fast and use your horn. Move off the road to the right if you have to, but never, never move to the left. <laughs> 